I forgot my polarized sunglasses again. All right, so, uh, well, I'm gonna do a lure review video. I haven't done one in a long time. I kind of stopped doing them, mostly. I get a lot of companies that reach out to me and ask me to review their videos. 99% of them are Amazon sellers. You know, people that sell cheap Chinese stuff on Amazon and they're all the exact same thing, even with, with just different names on them. And uh, they really don't even care if you make a video or not doing a review on it. They just want you to leave an Amazon review because uh, it helps out their store and makes their ratings and makes their, their items easier to find or, or however Amazon works. But a lot of them even try to uh, offer to pay you to go and buy it. That way it's a, a legitimate purchase and a real review, but that's technically against Amazon's policies and all that. It's kind of a scam. Uh, a lot of them will actually underpay you, so you end up having to pay anyway, so it's not really free. Uh, so I don't do those anymore. I stopped doing those. I did used to do them. It's not worth it anymore. Uh, so I, I've started just ignoring most of those companies that, that reach out to me now. Uh, but every once in a while, I'll get one that's a legitimate company or maybe like a small time, you know, family business or something. And... Uh, even then, I kind of don't really respond to them all that much, or I mean, I'll, I'll politely reject them. Uh, because, I mean, everybody makes Sankos. Like, how many Sanko reviews are there out there? You don't need to, you know what a Sanko does. You don't need me, to, need me to review it for you. So the only time I'll actually do a lure review now is if the company has something I've never seen before or something unique or different. And uh, today I'm doing uh, Cardoza Lures. Uh, they don't have their own website yet. They're working on that. They have Facebook and Instagram. I'll link that down below. Uh, these are... Uh, I mean, I've used something similar to it before that had a... It was like not a paddle tail, but a flapper. I called them flappers. Uh, but they were round. It was like a full-bodied Sanko with a round flat, flat tail. And these are not full-bodied Senko style. These are, they're original, they're actually meant for, for drop shot, but I'm going to be trying some different things today. Uh, this one's a little torn up, but you get the idea. Uh, it's got a spear-shaped flapper tail, and it's also flat on one side, which is, probably means it was a handmade mold and hand-poured. Uh, probably not an injection. I don't see an injection mold doing this. Uh, but yeah, it's got a spear-shaped uh, tail on it, and it's a really thin, small profile. It's actually smaller profile than the skinny singles that I use. And if you've ever met me before, or maybe in some of my videos I talk about it, I always go for small profiles and thin thin profiles, like the skinny singles or small swim baits. That's what I use. Uh, but yeah, they... I don't know if I can hold them both up. There's the skinny Senko, which is probably about one and a half times thicker than this profile the body type and they're the same length and this one it's also a little thinner because it's flat on one side so i'm not going to drop shot it because we know that works that's what they're designed for i'm going to try some other things i have actually thrown them a couple of times or thrown them one time before but i wasn't it was just a bad day i couldn't get fish to bite on anything no matter what i was throwing not just these so i do know that they are buoyant they kind of float they sink really slow if you don't put any weight on it, so you have to use some kind of weight. So I'm not going to just do regular Texas, weightless Texas rig. I'm going to put a bullet weight on it. Uh, and maybe a jig head. And I'm also going to, uh, instead of just going flat like that, which I know that'll work too, I'm going to turn it sideways. That way it gets like a fish profile and maybe we'll get some of that swimming action in the tail. And that's what I'm going to be trying today. So I'm going to get out there. I'm going to start off at this little pond right down here. Uh, and then hit the river. So let's get to it. Starting off with a small jig head. I think this is a 1 16th maybe. Jig head just to, just to get it out there. Because that's already tied on. That's what I finished with the last time I tried. When you have it flat like this, it doesn't get very much side to side motion because it's just completely flat. There's nothing moving it side to side but it gets a lot of up and down motion 
which you know it's a drop shot that's what you're gonna be doing You've, i've got it on a jig head you jig it off the bottom bounce it up and down and it gets that up and down motion so that's what i'm gonna be trying with this but a lot of the ways i fish like i'm i'm a twitcher you know when i fish skinny sankos and stuff and finesse worms i get them moving side to side that's why i want to move this or or turn it sideways try to get that side to side movement problem is using a jig head like this i'm gonna get the right movement in the body but it's such a short hook shank that i'm gonna have to get a big fish or something that's gonna eat the whole thing all the way to the head or even just the head it's the only way i'm gonna get a hook set if they grab it they can grab 90 percent of the body like that and i won't be able to get a hook set on them so it's gonna be kind of difficult catching them on a jig head i, I am aware of that already going into this but i'm testing the lure out i want to see its movement and what better way to get the movement out of it than having 90 percent of it uh, free from the hook to move around all right so the pond was a bust now i'm gonna look i'm looking for somewhere where i can access the water it's kind of high up from the water over here the hill's going down and then it just drops straight down into the water but, well, it doesn't drop straight down into the water. It drops straight down, and then the water is further down away from it, so... It's kind of hard to get a cast out. Alright, there you go. It's got a small, I think it's like a 1 8 uh, ounce bullet weight, and a very thin gauged EWG hook. There was a bite. I got a bite. But... Didn't get the hook. Okay, so I've only had one bite so far. Which I'm not going to blame that on the lure. It's just right in the middle, middle of a drastic weather transition. Going from really hot to cold. To cold so it's going to be tough to catch them anyway. But, I mean, I go over some pros and cons with it so far. Pros, I mean, I like the size. Uh, you know, it's a good material. It's nice and durable. It's cheap. They're like three dollars for a pack of eight or something like that. So it's like on the like uh, comparable to like yum, yum dingers or something. Uh, negatives. I I wish there was some kind of oil on them, or maybe salt infused, or I mean, really preferably both. Kind of like how Sankos are. Uh, they're just straight up soft plastic there's no no oils no salt i've been biting off the end of this thing trying to every time the end starts getting torn off and tasting them and i can tell you for sure there is 100 percent no salt and that's a big thing for me anyway i mean as soft as the material is there's not a lot of movement to them not a lot of action i mean i'm not i know i'm not exactly fishing it properly you know i'm supposed to be drop shotting it but even then, like on a jig head and all that, the, it just, it's like it might as well just be a hard plastic body bait swimming straight at me. Alright, well, I, I just can't find any fish. It's not that the fish aren't biting, it's like, it's not that the lure sucks or anything, I just can't find any. I've had one bite, but I haven't actually seen anything other than tilapia out here. So, I'm going to keep fishing with this. I know I can catch something on it. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's going to work. But I'm just not finding any fish. So I'm going to keep fishing until I find something. Or until I catch something. But in the meantime, I was, I was kind of thinking about this. And if I was able to, to give them some uh, design advice or ideas. Like what I would want. I would try to make the end of this tail. Maybe like if it's a, if it's a handmade mold. Like in plaster or something. I'm not sure what kind of molds they use. But... If there's a way to dig out the outer edges of the spear tip and kind of make it like a rage claw so it kind of hooks down a little bit and you know it would basically look like that that would catch water and give it a whole bunch more movement or even just one side that would give it this twisting wacky twisting movie movement i mean that's that's the that's what i would do to this because i mean just the way it is right now i mean I mean, I'm not really fishing it the way you're supposed to be, but I am like jigging it off the bottom and bouncing it and stuff, and I'm just not seeing the the amount of movement that I would like. But other than that, it's a great bait. I mean, I've only got really 
three complaints about it and that's the one would be the oil and salt and I don't remember what the other one was and I guess two would be to maybe give it some kind of more movement uh, maybe add like just a little lip like kind of like a rage claw or something rage craw or a rage anything with just a little bit of a, a hook on the end of that the uh, the tail there the, the spearhead so I gave up on the park where I was it was closing so figured the last few minutes of daylight I would come and fish this area so water is actually pretty clear oh there was a bite there was a bite right there come on come back for it there we go that's a fish it's a good fish well it's fighting hard anyway i don't know everything feels like a good fish on this rod yeah it's not bad it's good good quad there we go and you can see the spear hanging out of it covering its eye there ah. <laughs> took a while but i finally got one and he put up a good fight on the spear so i knew they would work it was just a matter of finding a fish and i found the guad here and uh in at the bottom of this kayak shoot and still water off to the side next to the moving water so there we go and like i was saying before this is definitely a bait you want to throw with some kind of weight on it for some snag now uh drop shot ideally but jig heads theoretically could work i did it texas rigged with a small eighth ounce bullet weight it really is ideal for the drop shot something like that's going to give it the most movement out of it and it's a nice compact size i'm using thin gauge hooks so don't damage them too much but yeah if anything other than a drop shot is going to damage it a lot quicker and be tougher to catch them on so but it does work Said, oh, I think I had another bite there. You know what? It's already starting to get dark. I don't want to be trying to climb up out of here without being able to see. So I'm going to just call it there. Call it a video right there. And get going. So there you go. Check out Cardova Lures. They have plenty of other stuff besides these. They have like topwater... Well, they said topwater frogs, but I think they're more like the, the speed toads, whatever, that you just burn across the surface, the soft plastic ones. Uh, Sankos, of course, other, pretty much any kind of soft plastic bait you can imagine, I'm sure they have it. So, check them out on Instagram. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.